Hi there everybody and welcome to another quarantine cast with me, David Stipolak, and today I'm joined by the wonderful Scott Davis. Hello. And the even more wonderful, if that's possible, John Lyas. Thanks, mate. You were a bit too long on trying to work out how to describe yourself. Yeah, I was sorry. I wasn't there. Right well, the best thing about it's you, right. John, is the fact you've brought all your friends with you. <laughs> I get it. You, right, you brought right, all your right. friends with you, which always amuses me. <laughs> and Scott, but Scott has brought his Hey You Guys logo that he's put in the corner. Go on, Scott. Where is it? Yeah, shall I put it up? Where is it? This one. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's beautiful. Hey, yeah. uh, and we've got our funky well. intro music, but we'll fade that out, I think. Um, so welcome everybody who's watching. Uh, if you don't know who we are, um, you're very welcome. We uh, are making this up as we go along. Uh, we didn't used to do that many. Um, I've got a drill going off behind me. Let's turn that off. We didn't used to do that many um, uh, live streams, but we're really enjoying them. So we'll do a few more. If you like them, let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe uh, if you like what we do. And uh, yeah, uh, make sure you do comment because otherwise it's it's much less fun without you. Um, so today we are going to start off by talking about Honor Blackman, who uh, just heard in the news not that long ago, uh, an hour or so ago, that she sadly died at the age of 94. Um, if you don't know who Honor Blackman is, she is an actress who has been around for a long, long time. She's been in James Bond. She was in The Avengers, uh, not the more recent one. Uh, um, and uh, the original Avengers, which is interestingly why Avengers couldn't be called Avengers in this country. It was Avengers Assemble. And my personal favourite was uh, Jason and the Argonauts. Um, so, uh, yeah, guys, um, what are your sort of memories of Honor Blackman? What is, what's the film that sticks out to you in your memory of her? Uh, definitely for me, it has to be um, when she was uh, in Goldfinger. Um, uh, because she seemed to be the only person, the only woman who could maybe stand up to James Bond a little bit. And when you're watching these films as a kid, you just kind of accept the things that are shown to you. And I still remember the very when I was very young watching this, thinking she seems different. She seems like a lot more fun and a lot more interesting. And um, I think that those characteristics were why I think she was picked for not only for, for golfing, but also for the Avengers, because she wasn't just someone there to look nice um and to you know ask questions of the of the male lead she she had she had purpose she had agency um and she just had real charisma and real charm so yeah it's it's a real shame she had a good life though you know 94 is an excellent age um but she would be missed there's not too many more people uh like her so yeah scott yeah, I remember from James Bond, uh, and also I remember her. I just had to Google it, but I found it. There was a sitcom that she was on in the nineties called The Upper Hand. Yeah, which I used to love it. It was based on an American when show, I was wasn't a kid. So. Who's the boss? <laughs> yeah, it's based on Who's the Boss, which I never knew until I just Googled it now. So that was yeah. that was interesting. But uh, yeah, I remember her from that. And like uh, like John said, she had a great warmth and a great um, kind of thoughtfulness, and uh, her her talent was. Was, was was just incredible wasn't it and uh, yeah after that I remember seeing her with James Bond but I was going through the list just now about other things that she's been in there's quite a she was in she was in Bridget Jones's diary wasn't she for a, a short while she was in Cockneys versus Zombies which yeah you have that in your CV classic but, well interestingly uh, I was on the set for that so um where's my video I've got somewhere I've got a video of uh, where, where we were lucky enough to go on set and I actually got to meet her for that film so that that's a memory that sticks in my mind actually amazing and she was in she was also in jason the argonauts and the avengers as well wasn't she so mm. yeah a lot of uh, a lot of amazing stuff but she was even when she was on on telly and stuff even if she was on like a, a comedy special or you know cropped up on those like a night with someone and she'd ask a question or something you knew straight away she had that she had that charm and that uh, that kind of cleverness about her, didn't she she always had a little she was quite uh, quick-witted, wasn't she, as well? So, yeah. And she was yeah. very Absolutely, outspoken. Yeah. She, she was very, um, you know, into her politics and equality, and that's something I think she's concentrated a lot more on afterwards. And I think um, that really rounds out what you what you would like her to be like. Do you know what I mean? Like after seeing her in those films and, that, and those, those series, you kind of want her to, you know, to be pushing that. And, and she really did. So that's uh, she's left a good legacy, which is which is great. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, uh, rest in peace, Honor. And, uh, yeah, thank you for all the memories that you've left with us. Um, so many. Uh, and I think I might have to watch Jason and the Argonauts again just to uh, to get my fix. 
uh, of that amazing <laughs> film. I, I do love that film. Have you both seen Jason and the Argonauts? Yeah, oh, but yeah. Like, you know, years Good. and years and years ago. What I yeah. haven't seen is Cotton's vs. Zombies, so maybe oh, yeah. that's a double bill for tonight. <laughs> well, yeah. it was strange. Cotton's vs. Zombies, actually, they shot some of it in Sutton, which is where I live, uh, in South London. So um, that was weird because I... Uh, the, the, there's a park where they put all of the trailers and so um we actually sort of this park that i've normally been to play frisbee in or kick a ball around was strange because it had all these it had uh on a black was obviously there and uh you know this eclectic cast harry is it harry treadaway or luke treadaway that was in that one i can't remember one of the treadaway twins um, a treadaway yeah a treadaway so um yeah Anyway, moving on. So today we are going to talk about uh, some of the movies that are going to go straight to VOD. And we've got quite a, this is a, a, a quiz question for years to come. Um, Scott, do you want to tell us a bit about what happened today and um, why this is significant? I like that you've put it's like a quiz answer. That will be a quiz answer in years to come. Won't it it? What was the first VOD in this post coronavirus uh, cinema experience that we'll be having? <laughs> Which is very true. Uh, yes, today um, it, uh, it's kind of a momentous day in some, in some ways. And you know, it's obviously happened in a very strange way and in strange climate. But um, so Trolls 2, Trolls World Tour was released today on VOD. There it is. All the colorful trolls are back. Um, and this is, this, is the, kind of, this could be a big deal in Hollywood because this is the first um, VOD release through the coronavirus that is the first kind of straight to VOD. A lot of the other movies, well, of the big kind of multi-million dollar uh, studio films, obviously um, Universal behind this and DreamWorks Animation, obviously a huge audience for it in the cinemas. Uh, and uh, the first movie was, was pretty successful. So there was a lot of buzz around this and obviously releasing as uh, during Easter week, which uh, Easter half term, which is technically still this week and next week, but obviously that's kind of blurred into, into one big uh, big break now, but it was due this week in, in the UK through Easter. Uh, and it could it could change a lot of things if uh, this is going to premium VOD, so it's available on, I believe on iTunes, or Google Play, on, uh, I think you should be able to watch it through Amazon Prime as well and like Sky Cinema, I'm not 100 sure on that. Apologies if you go on there, it's not on there. But I think a lot of the main platforms, it's on there as a premium. So it's fifteen, I think it's fifteen or sixteen pounds to to rent for forty eight hours to watch. It's good timing. So it's quite a lot of money, of, say, but I guess if if you're going to the cinema with your family and you're going to spend, you know, thirty to fifty pounds, then it's actually it's maybe it's better. Yeah, I think that's the that's what's going to um, change things. If it if it if it is successful, obviously there's no no real way to do the same sort of box office uh um box office mojo kind of results as you would normally do but this it's a big deal i mean it's if this becomes a hugely successful movie then it may change what a post coronavirus hollywood slash cinema experience is going to look like i mean if trolls world talk and go online i mean it's obviously slightly skewed in the sense that everybody's at home but it is uh it is you know we're in that situation at the moment so it's a it's a good kind of um It'll be a good test to see, test the waters, if you like, to see what is is uh, is in the pipeline uh, and what yeah. movies could be successful on the demand. Obviously, there's no way on earth, as we know, and we'll come to in a minute that, and we spoke about this before, no no chance that Bond or Tenant or Wonder Woman or Black Widow or Mulan is ever going to go straight to streaming services, even at premium uh, level, because they just worth too much money through the cinema admissions. But for Trolls, it's an interesting one because obviously families are at home and and you know, kids have been at home for quite a few weeks now. So I'm sure there's, uh, I'm sure you two would probably say there's, uh, you know, need to find new avenues to keep the kids. Well, I don't know what you mean, because yesterday my children and... decided to watch Fantastic Four. Uh, they, they found a DVD <sighs> lying on my side. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... Man, you can't leave that kind of stuff lying around. That's, that's, that's on you. I hope you realize yeah. that. Yeah. I, I think it blew yeah. their minds when I told them that Chris Evans was Captain, Mar uh, Captain America. He was... Uh, they were a bit like, what would you mean? But hang on, how can he be him and him at the same time? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's gonna, it could be, could go down in history as the most influential movie of Hollywood or of the cinema industry across the world post coronavirus. Because if this is successful and this makes a lot of money, then it will open a lot of studios' eyes to what is potentially possible. Yeah. post coronavirus obviously the world will be different in many ways afterwards and a lot of people will fingers crossed be able to go back to work as soon as as soon as uh, is safe 
so the the audience will be slightly different but would people prefer to have their friday nights at home spend 16 pound to watch trolls or say it was something like i don't know a black widow-esque kind of movie a big movie that will see them make perhaps the same amount of money if not more money through doing these premium vod releases it's obviously slightly different for like we've spoken about before, for Bloodshot, for The Hunt, for The Invisible wo- uh, Invisible Man. I think it's an Invisible Woman, which is what you said earlier, Dave. It is, yeah. Into that trap. <laughs> the Invisible Man and a few other, uh, a few others that are happening. Obviously, the um, Birds of Prey was brought forward. Um, uh, obviously, Frozen and Star Wars have been brought forward on Disney Plus in the US. And a few others have been brought forward slightly earlier uh, than was anticipated. So those are a little bit different because their cinematic, uh, their theatrical window was was obviously shortened and some of, in some cases it wasn't even, didn't even happen. Um, mm. So it will be interesting to see how this goes down. I think it will go down very well because of the situation and the fact that it's very family orientated. So everyone can sit down and watch this, you know, not all the family can sit down and watch The Hunt, for example. But Trolls is, is, uh, is in a good, in a good position in that sense you know family sitting down you spend 16 pounds you can't go out but if you can all sit around and have some time together and watch watch a, a very uh you know fun movie that's uh you know gonna please everyone from 8 to 80 then it might um it might change a lot of things i don't think it will change too much because as, I say, as we saw about before the big movies are worth too much money for the studios but for those mid-level movies that we've we've talked about before this could be a door opening thing for them, you know, nothing to say that for something like a St. Maud or a uh, um, promising young woman, two of the, the big, the more higher profile uh, movies that were due to come out. And obviously there was um, things like First Cow in America, Kelly Reichardt's new movie and a few others of those kind of mid-level or low uh, independently financed movies. This could, this could prove to be a door open for everybody that they won't maybe need to wait for, everything to start again they could make a decent bit of money back from doing a vod platform release so we'll see and obviously netflix uh, we're going to mention it it during the cast but misbehavior is uh is now getting a vod release next week which is uh three almost three months you know before the the the, during the theatrical would have been the theatrical window only opened for a few days and then obviously the lockdown happened uh during its first week i think it, it obviously was in cinemas for maybe four or five days Mm. And then uh, uh, it was, it was obviously it was cinemas closed. But for that as well, this could be, this could, you know, it could potentially make, I don't know how it works out, but make more money than, than it would have done in the cinemas. I don't know. Who knows? It's, it's, know. it's strange, because, strange time. because you don't, because you don't have, um, you know, the, uh, the cinemas making their money from it. They're obviously going to be very unhappy. Who knows what's going to happen after, you know, when things get back to a new kind of normal. But it's interesting because the press tour for Trolls, like kind of the you know the, the the whole sort of press momentum was already out there, and it's half term or it's Easter, and it's a sequel as well. That would I think add to their to their decision to um to put it out on VOD. I presume also it's going to be getting a Blu-ray or you know a DVD release at some point. So they're going to make that money up again, aren't they? I'm just thinking about all the parents who. Uh, who have uh, you know a DVD or something? Then once it's been watched, and if it's loved by their kids, they want to watch it again. And of course, you can't do that with a forty-hour rental. It's just literally going to be the once, and then they have to buy it all again if they want if their kids want to watch it over and over. So, I presume it's going to be a big market for that as well. Um, I don't know. It's 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 a really strange time. It's 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 a strange. This is not a strange release to do it, but it could become yeah, like Dave said, one of those you know quiz questions about what was you know probably the most influential film in 2020 you know and no one's going to guess <laughs> trolls, trolls, are they? World trolls tour. Too. yeah man it's uh it's, it's a strange one but um yeah i mean i, I think it's, a, it's it's a fairly it's a fairly obvious move i don't think we're going to see many other people do it because there aren't that many kind of releases like this because they're you know families much cheaper to watch it at home you know you're in your own sort of you're in, in your own space you're not spending as much money and it makes a lot more sense right now for trolls too i don't think you're going to see many other big films make this leap. What may happen is the window between theatrical release and sort of, you know, premium VOD becomes a thing now, you know, much more than like digital, you know, uh, renting or whatever. Um, And then that window might shorten. So there may be fewer weeks where there's endless Avengers films playing in the cinemas, which may open the screens up to other 
you know, perhaps less um, blockbustery fare, which is a good thing. I think that's a, you know, cr- ridiculously optimistic thing to, to, to say, but, you know, we just don't know. So we, it'll be there's, um, I don't know if people have seen it, but there was a fantastic uh, round table that The Hollywood Reporter did um, where they had studio execs from basically all of the big studios and Netflix were there, Amazon Studios were there, and they um, talked about something called Red Carpet, which I'd never heard of before. And that's a place you can go. Uh, I think it, I'm not sure if it's a subscription if you play pay per movie, but that is a place you can go and watch legally uh, films in the cinema now. You know, you can. So it's for I think I think yeah, it's not yeah, cheap. Yeah, I heard of that. Um, but it's uh, but they were well aware of it because it was you know they brought it up. So um, there. So I guess although this is a bizarre thing because it isn't in the cinema. It, equally, Netflix have been doing this. You know where they'll release something for a very short time in the cinema for a couple of weeks, like The Irishman, uh, and then it comes onto their platform. Uh, I know Netflix is a different uh, beast, and they've been around for a while, and they've got heritage. And but it but essentially, it's not a dissimilar. Um, model to what uh, DreamWorks are having to do with this film. I think it's telling as well from a studio point of view that obviously it's it's, it's slightly different because of the timing, but very telling that they've allowed Trolls to go onto the VOD platform, but they've pulled and pushed back by a year the release of Minions 2, which obviously is a, is very much a billion dollar movie. You know, that's their, for Universal in terms of their animation this year, if anything was going to crack a billion dollars, it was going to be Minions. And so then moving it back, okay, back by year, back to Christmas, it's quite telling that was the movie said that one rather than Trolls, because I guess the box office for Trolls 2 would be substantially less than Minions, which is this huge franchise that more often than not has grossed, you know, since it's got bigger and bigger, has has brought in a billion dollars at least. So it's quite telling that that's the one that they've, obviously it was, it was, it was due later and could have quite easily been released in July, but the uncertainty over whether things will be back to normal by July has obviously changed a lot of studios' opinions. Mm. Yeah, I think yeah. it's quite telling that that's the one that they've pushed back by a year. Uh, and not said, right, we're not going to release Trolls, that they're quite confident that they should at least, if they take a hit, won't take a substantial enough hit with Trolls to not be able to put it on the video on demand system now. It's also, I mean, I don't know what the situation is. Does it stay £15 for the whole window or will it will it come mm-hmm. down to, to a, a, a cheaper rate? after the window of close because you know that's that as you say that's when the blu-ray and dvd releases would normally have been and it would have gone on to sky cinema for you know a mm. tenner or maybe for you know during easter holiday if, if this had happened and the easter holiday had happened normally would they have said oh just for easter for these two weeks you can rent it for six pounds while you know the kids are at home or something like that i think that's an interesting that would be interesting to see how long that takes with this one particularly because the hunt you know obviously in america the window is slightly shorter isn't it so we get you get the Blu-ray releases very much quicker than they do in the UK, uh, apart from a few exceptions like Curzon. But Trolls would be interesting to see how long it stays at that premium price before we see it come down. There's probably, you know, studio execs literally working this thing sort of thing out at the minute. I guess they'll see how they're, mm. how, how it goes. If no one buys it, they're going to have to drastically reduce the price. Um, so I guess that, but equally, I know many people who are just desperate to give their children some, something different to do that isn't uh, yeah. a tablet. Uh, and uh, if you haven't got a garden, you're limited, you know. And so, spending fifteen quid on on two hours of peace and quiet is um, <laughs> priceless. <laughs> yeah, it's priceless. Oh, isn't it? priceless. Uh, well, so hey, Jordan, if you're, uh, I guess if you're family with you know mum and dad and kids, it might mean that one of the parents can go and go and do the shopping for two hours and leave the kids at home with the other parent. To, do you know what I mean? All of those little yeah, things come into it, practical. particularly in the moment now. They, you know. So, but it'll be interesting to see. But I think it's a good bounce. <laughs> In the nicest possible, it's good at programming in the sense that, as you say, gives families and kids a bit of distraction. Also, you have it for 48 hours. So if the kids love it, the next day, sometimes for kids, you know, younger kids, they might go, can we watch Trolls again? It's like, yes, yeah. we can. You've got it. To be honest, day, if you're so paying you 15 it quid, again. it's like you're watching Trolls right. again. Nothing else is happening <laughs> until you've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no dinner for you unless you watch Trolls for the second time. At least three times. <laughs> yeah, okay. Cool. Well, do let us know in the comments what you think about this model. Uh, could it work? Do you think it's a good one? Uh, yeah, do, do, do keep typing away. Um, right, on to the next topic, and that is the fact that, and we've mentioned this a bit already, about the fact that um, 
uh, two studios last week, Disney and Paramount, both uh, let us know that their some of their movies are being pushed back in the year. Scott, do you want to fill us in a bit more on that? Yeah, so we'll start. Well, it was Paramount first. Paramount that um, were the next studio to quote unquote blink first, as it were, for obvious reasons. Um, so they've moved a few of the release dates back. The, the biggest announcement was the there's a new date for Quiet Place Part Two, which obviously was one of the movies that was uh, postponed uh, after the lockdown and everything else. So that moved from its uh, end of March release date. There it is. I think it was March. What's it say there? March twentieth. March nineteenth. Yeah. March 20th, uh, which obviously was going to, um, it was one of those that um, obviously not just for us, but for lots of people in the industry where the, the promotion and the, you know, sort of junkets and everything was kicking into gear. And that was kind of on the horizon before, uh, before obviously the lockdown. And uh, I think it was the studio and John Krasinski together said it's not the time to, to release the movie. So they pushed it back, but that has a release date now, September the 4th, which is very interesting because it's September. Because it's my mum's um, birthday. People, September the 4th, there you go. Birthday present right there. We're going to see Quiet Place too. <laughs> <laughs> um, it will be interesting to see, because I don't think September is a time period where a lot of, well, I guess there is, there's been some stuff before, but it, it's usually around the time where they usually wait to Halloween for, for, for that kind of stuff. Obviously, the circumstances are very, very different, and the studio and everyone want to get the film out as soon as they can so that people can, can see it and enjoy it, because uh, word was before that it is very, very good, and people were, were singing its praises. So that's now September the 4th. So, again, we've talked about this. It's going to become such a clogged, uh such a clogged uh cal- calendar of releases but for us who love movies you know coming that's our yeah. reward i guess for for for, for following <laughs> the guidelines and doing everything that we're supposed to be doing is to, to have a plethora of, of fantastic cinema content anyway that's been moved to september the 4th uh the spongebob squarepants new movie sponge on the run what a great subtitle that is oh fantastic. man it was just um <laughs> that's been moved Surprisingly, I didn't even didn't read that properly before. It's been moved from May 22nd to July 31st. So they're quietly confident that there might be the opportunity during what would have been the summer holidays to to get the film in cinemas. Obviously, that could change. We obviously don't know that. There's no time frame. It could be another things, one that we see go straight to uh, VOD. Quietly confident that the end of July might be the time where slowly but surely we can get back to some sort of normality. So that's Just bring moved. out SpongeBob. Uh, that's all we want. It's what the people want. <laughs> hey you know at a time where we've all been doing these things and it's been quite tough for everybody and it will be continue to be tough something like a spongebob movie is probably quite <laughs> quite perfect isn't it to go and just you could watch be right. a bit of fun for an hour and a half do you know what i mean so i think that's good uh and the uh the big one paramount's big one in the summer was uh top gun 2 top gun maverick uh starring tom cruise and it was tom cruise himself that took to twitter to say that uh I'm paraphrasing, but he said, you've waited 34 years for it. Uh, you can wait a few more months. Uh, we're going to be releasing on uh, December the 23rd. Which, hey, thanks. I'm waiting for to Christmas to see Top Gun 2. But he, we're losing you, Scott. I think. For his first Tom Cruise. So uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, you're good. Come back. You lost Come me? Right. Oh, okay. I'm back. Hello. Uh, so yeah, that's Top Gun Two has been moved to December the 23rd. Um, so uh, a bit of toing and froing. I think there was a few other Paramount ones uh, before. That, but obviously, the, the biggest one before the lockdown was Quiet Place Two. But now, yeah, that's coming out September the fourth. So um, we've got um, comments coming in wait, from really. people just so, talking uh, about so, films yeah, from they've... other studios like Ghostbusters Afterlife that's been moved to. Um, next yeah. year which i think we covered in a previous one but yeah this this, this is just sort of the latest yeah, ones that, that we've heard of yeah it was that and morbius last week from from sony yeah. um and uh, we mentioned yeah that their other big one which was venom 2 is not out till october so uh, you know that's one of those where you don't really need to to do anything with that because uh, uh, you know fingers crossed by october when venom comes out you know, people will get to see that so but we'll see we'll see what happens that was paramount uh, and also there was a huge announcement from Disney, which a lot of people were waiting for because of the uh, postponements of both Mulan and Black Widow. Um, and they have the first thing they've done is shift 
well, we'll talk about Mulan first, as you've got it on the screen there. So Mulan hasn't actually been pushed back that far. That's only been pushed back to July 24th. So again, Disney are quietly confident that by the end of July, we may be able to to go back into into be able, you know to go back to the cinemas and enjoy some movies together. So that's been moved from I think it was at the end of April, uh, end of March, wasn't it? Uh, Mulan was out because the premiere mm. um, was just before the lockdown, wasn't it? A few that's days right. before. Yeah. Um, so that's been moved back only to like to July the twenty fourth. Uh, but because of that, the uh, the uh, Dwayne Johnson Emily Blunt film Jungle Cruise, which was due to be released on that day, has now been moved back to next year, next July. So July thirtieth, twenty twenty one. Um, so, you know, Disney moving their slate around a little bit uh, with that. Uh, there's also a comedy out in July called Free Guy, which is stars Ryan Reynolds and Taika Waititi and Jodie Comer from uh, Killing Eve. And I can't remember his name. Joe Deary from Stranger Things is in that as well. Uh, that's been moved back to December the 11th. So that's coming out at Christmas as well. So uh, very interesting. Uh, the other big one was obviously Black Widow. Uh, the release date for that has been changed now. It's been moved back to November the 6th, uh, 2020, uh, which was the original date for the Eternal. So what um, Kevin Feige and Marvel have, have simply done is they've they've shuttered back all of their release dates to what the next one would have been. So for Black yeah. Widow, it's gone back to where the Eternals has gone. The Eternals has now moved to February, which I think was when Shang-Chi was going to come out. Shang-Chi has been moved back to May. Doctor Strange has been moved back to November. Thor has been moved back to February 2022. Uh, Captain Marvel 2 has been moved back to July 2022 and Black Panther 2 has been pushed back. Oh, Black Panther 2 retains its May the 8th 2022 release. So essentially they've just shut everything back to the next, what would have been the next release date. So from Eternals, it's now Black Widow and then the domino effect uh, from that. So we're still getting it. I think the fans were not worried, but were asking questions about how the continuity of it would work should, say, Black Widow not come out till December, but then some of the Disney Plus stuff come out and vice versa, and would would yeah. the Eternals come out before Black Widow and everything else? I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter too much, does it? Let's let's be honest. Um, we all know the... <laughs> We all know the, that, and also Black Widow is technically a prequel, so it, you know it's out of the, you know it's a it's a it's it's before I think it's set between Civil War and um, Infinity War, I believe. Anyway, it's hardly hardly important, is it really? But you are going to get to see it, everybody. So November the sixth, uh, in that what's seemingly going to be a very very crowded uh, Christmas period, which you know I think again for us cinema fans and for us on this podcast right now, that's going to be a very exciting time. Yeah, you'll be busy, Scott. Uh, but that's uh, well, yeah. But I, I you know, I, as I you love before, it. I see it as kind of a, our, our reward for for doing <laughs> what we need to do to protect those who are vulnerable, et cetera, et cetera, and to, and to make sure this virus goes away and leaves us alone. Uh, but yeah, it'll be a nice and nice, busy, nice, busy period. So that's happened. The other big uh, Disney news is that um, one of their big movies that was coming out in May, the adaptation of the Artemis Fowl books, there he is, uh, is now going straight to Disney Plus rather than having a theatrical release. Um, I might be wrong in saying that there was a few whispers of that on social media. That they might have done that anyway um but that's what they're going to do uh so the release date for that i think was the end of may but they haven't announced whether that's when it's going to go to disney plus or whether there's going to be a different a different yeah, date for may that. 29th it was, um actually. but yeah that, that's going back to disney plus it has been delayed a few times or i think it was due out last summer 2019 or sort of the tail end of last year but it got pushed back to the summer and then it was moved a couple of times, I think, in terms of like, you know, it was out, I think, in April and then it moved to May and done that stuff and stuff. But now it's, uh, yeah, now it's going straight to Disney Plus. I would imagine it would still come out around the same time, if not the same date it was going to be released in cinemas. Uh, so that's a big, that's a big bit of news. I, I, you know, it, it's obviously a big movie with a big budget and um, it's a big has a following in terms of the book and everything else, but they obviously, again, we like with, like with uh, trolls as compared to minions, they obviously see a lot of their other slate. And if they get to be released in the cinemas, will 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 there won't be too much damage if they put Artemis Fowl on Disney plus. And there would be, if they did it for say black widow. So no, um, the cast in that. So yeah, it's on the poster. Uh, that's, that's, Josh that's Gad, done with that. Colin so, Farrell, uh, Judy Dench. I think it's. Side. I think it, I don't know what you guys think, but I think it's pretty. Smart. In terms of the MCU stuff, I think that was just the easiest thing to do, wasn't it? Just to shut. If I the, ran Marvel, that's what I'd have done. Yeah. I think. I think you'd be silly to to 
play with it. And they, they, as we keep saying on all these casts, they can't film the films that were supposed to be out on those other dates. So they're having to backfill. So this, this makes perfect mm. sense to me. Yeah, it does make a lot of sense. As you say, we, we spoke about it. Obviously, there's so many movies are kind of in hiatus at the moment from the, uh, the, the Rock and Ryan Reynolds Netflix film to the Batman, which is filming in, was filming in London or Glasgow at the time, one of the two. Uh, and countless others that were that were stuck in that are now stuck on hiatus, and you know they haven't f- fully felt the effects of what this this is going to do to them. You know whether they're going to have to recast stuff, whether they're going to have to have to you know, they can pick up and just carry on, or whether they're going to have to stop entirely. Who knows? You know, there's a lot of things. And then, as you say, the shatter effect of that to the next release, whatever the next release for those actors or that director would have been, is now going to going to change. I think the other interesting one that hasn't moved or hasn't, there's nothing been said on is Christopher Nolan's new film, Tenet, or Ten, Tenet, Tenet, I think it's called. When is that still July? Being released in in ju- July sometime? Yeah, the end of July, which is you, which is um, usually when a lot of his big movies get released, I think July is his, is his kind of window. I think only Interstellar is, was slightly different in terms of the big ones since he obviously did Batman Begins. Um, that's interesting also as well because there's a there's a I don't know if you guys follow or do you guys watch it and follow but there's a there's a Twitter page called Trailer Track where they do all the the trailer releases and stuff like that and the guy that runs it Anton is very clued up in all that kind of stuff and uh, his suggestion was obviously a lot of it comes down to IMAX screens um, if Tenet was to move to say oh, Christmas time availability Top Gun's going to come out yeah, yeah. Mm, true. And they're all they're all a part of the Again, I don't know if I'm like completely 100% on this, but there's a, obviously a contract between the studios and IMAX and the cinemas and how many screens they get, et cetera, et cetera, for, for two weeks. Uh, and in other years, you know, there's been, a, there's been a big movie and then there's been a Christmas time, there's been a Star Wars or something. So they all get their window, don't they? So it'd be interesting to see if Tenet gets moved um, to Christmas or whether it gets moved to next year or it sticks. You know, there's obviously these films that we've mentioned that have had, have stuck or gone to a July release or end of July that might, tenant might not even need to move it might one of others might see it as a opportunity shall we say but they they might be able to have one of the first film big films to be in the cinemas when we go back hopefully go back to normal and and you know a christopher nolan movie in the height of summer uh when people will hopefully you know want to go and see uh see movies and stuff they might think of it as a as a, a kind of risk worth taking and leaving it right to the last possible minute when they get advice from from different governments around the world whether you know, things will change, but yeah, there's a, there's a fairly, it, I mean, it's, there's, there's no surprising that if you've got a certain releases, which are sticking to the end of July, you can guarantee that somewhere there's, you know, a, a studio who's Internal saying, right, well, we know what's going to happen for the next two months. Say, mm. let's see maybe in a few weeks time, what's going to happen and see how we're doing. And then, yeah, month by you know, month. make it, I still don't, I'm, I'm still not sure how it's, you know, how in, july we're going to see things returning to the normality which means people can go and sit in a in a crowded space whenever i see anything on tv now where there's any kind of people touching uh, or hugging or any kind of you know gathering more than one one person or two people it just freaks me out i think we have this strange natural aversion to it i'm not so sure that in at the end of july people are going to be okay enough to just say you know what everything's fine now i'm going to be i think you know, we'll probably flick straight back into it i think it will be weird for a, for a moment so. and then it'll be all right again did you guys watch have i, I got I, news for you last friday where they did it all on zoom no I didn't see it, it was the strangest thing there was no atmosphere I'm, i didn't i turned it off it didn't work for me um but it was <laughs> a very <laughs> it's a very sad thing but just for, just because things don't work as they used to i, I don't think it's uh I, I think we're going to see a, um, it would be great if like the drive-in cinema returned. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's amazing. Dream. I love that idea. Imagine it'd be great. You could scan and drive up there and you could be socially distanced and sit in your car. There is a couple in the so. US that have, that have been selling out their screenings because you sure. know, they've put on, I don't know what they've been putting on stuff from Christmas, maybe like Star Wars, for example, or Jum- yeah, Jumanji classic. or something, or, you know, a classic horror film or, you know, a classic, you know, Pulp Fiction or something, I don't know, mm. or something from the 70s or whatever. But the ones that I've seen that have gone and done it and or kind of reopened their old driving facility have seen, like, people in record numbers going into I'm not surprised. Movies, Has anyone got a really big garden that we could uh, turn yeah, into man. a drive-thru? A drive uh, drive in there, and a drive through. There is both. a, a drive through. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there is, there is um, especially with them, um, especially with cinema, there is 
something you know almost religious about going into a place and get into a cinema with other people and the experience of it we all know this that the best place to see any film is in a cinema and i think that that's what's going to draw people back because it's not just because it's this particular film or that particular film but because we need to we're social creatures right we need to go out we need to experience these things together and i think when this all works itself out, I think that there will be some things that will change, but I don't think that need and that desire to go out and or you know be in the cinema together and experience something. I don't think that will change. But will it happen in time for Christopher Nolan's new film? Who knows? I think I think say. in a in a strange way as well, and it, it, they're completely different. But I think it will also be the cinemas will be led by whether sport comes back particularly the, yeah. the the premier league whether the premier league actually comes back obviously it's different in the sense that they can just they could quite conceivably just cancel the seasons and just start mm. again in june or july but i think if anything comes back first it will probably be sport because they can play some of it behind closed doors which as you yeah. say the atmosphere would be very different like mm. you said about watching a television show like who have i got news for you that you want to have the same sort of atmosphere but um I think it will slightly be led by all that stuff because if if by say the end of June or middle of July the Premier League is back and there's maybe not full houses but you know there's a there's a there's a there's a certain amount of fans yeah. being able to go and watch the football sparsely around the stadium or stuff like that mm. it might be it might be led by that but I think you're right in the sense that there might be people out there that just go no no I don't want to go to the cinema at least till Christmas time until sure. we, you know until the the kind of fear and everything has, has gone but i saw a study and i just put it up here that says that there was a i can't remember who the doesn't say who the thing was but there was a study by someone and they said that whoever it was said 70 percent of the people they spoke to want to go back to the cinema as soon as they possibly can so yeah, i don't know but obviously we have we you know i think by by everything we're obviously led by the governments and by the the numbers and by that by that curve in every single country you know so but the, I guess the good thing is if everyone sticks to the rules, you look at like China, how they're doing now, you know, they're slowly but surely their bars and their clubs and their restaurants and their cinemas are slowly reopening to the point where I think I read that they're going to, when they reopen properly, they're going to show a big Avengers in Marathon just because there isn't anything new to put in the cinemas, but they can put in old stuff. So they might put the Avengers in, they might put, put some of the old um, like Fast and Furious movies in and stuff like that so that people go to the cinema so it, it depends but hey in two months time we could still be sitting here doing this podcast and nothing's changed because people <laughs> are talking about the rules. top gun so, 2 has you know. been pushed back to uh summer 2021 yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> did you um so did you guys know, hey did, on last night i was looking on sky i happened to flick on sky sports because it said live formula one and i'm like hang on what and uh, they basically had loads of uh, x and present <laughs> Formula One drivers and loads of other sportsmen. Ben Stokes was there, uh, all doing, uh, playing um, F1 2019. Uh, like literally, they turned it into a sport. So they were all sat in their houses wherever, and they're all just playing online. It was amazing. Uh, but I thought, cool. What have we? What have we come to? Where live sport is now? Loads of geeks playing, uh, playing sport. Although I'd happily have watched it all day long. My wife wasn't sick. Esports, is, esports is a is a, is, a, is a huge is a huge industry, and yeah, that's exactly yeah. the kind of thing that's going to that's carrying on. Well, it took over Prime it, so. Sport Channel last night. Britain's premium yeah, sports channel cool. was now put esports. It'll happen. It'll yeah. happen. It'll be esports soon. Trust me. Okay. Okay. Cool. So what's next? Uh, so just finally, um, Killing Eve. I've never seen it, uh, but Scott you gotta has. Got to watch it. And uh, John has, yeah, watch it. and there's some big news. Go, Scott. So, uh, Killing Eve season three is on the horizon. Uh, initially, uh, we uh, in the UK we, we got uh, the series slightly later in the US because it's I think it's made primarily by BBC America. So, and is it AMC or TNT or sh one of the big BBD kind of TV studios is behind it as X, well? XYZ. Sorry? No, I have no idea. XYZ. I'm just saying three letters because that's why those TV channels um, seem to want to. And be. that the uh, release date for that was uh, the end of April, but BBC America brought forward the US debut to the 14th, 13th or 14th of April. So they brought it forward about two weeks. Um, but there hadn't been any news on the UK one. And because we get it delayed, we, everyone kind of thought, or the fans thought, oh, we would, we'd get it two weeks later. But they've announced that. Uh, 
we are getting Killing Eve on the same, almost the same day as BBC America. So the yes. 13th or 14th of April. It is uh, good news. We are it is good news. Getting on the B very good news. Uh, we are getting, I'm just getting the news up here because I just wanted to double check what the information wonder, was. But the BBC, yeah, it was a couple of days week? ago. They've conf- I think it's week by week anyway. Right. I think that's how it worked before. I, I've never watched it like that. I watched it. I watched it, I, you know, blitzed season one and season two pretty quick back to back when they were available. Um, so, yeah, the BBC have confirmed that uh, uh, Killing Eve Series 3 will stream weekly on BBC iPlayer from Monday the 13th, the day after it launches on BBC America. Okay. So I think we're they're going to scream it in America and then we're going to get it the next early the next morning. So I think it's about 6 a.m. UK time. It will go onto the iPlayer. Uh, episodes will drop weekly and be available to stream every Monday from 6 a.m. Uh, the series, if you don't have iPlayer or you only you know you have a normal telly, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the series will air on BBC One on Sundays at 9 p.m. starting from Sunday, April the 19th. Uh, season one and season two are now available to watch on the BBC iPlayer. So we're getting it at the same time as the US, which is very different to what it's been before. But mm. they obviously, uh, with everyone being at home, etc., they've, they've taken the opportunity to give us to be very kind to us and give us uh, season three uh, almost the same day as the US, which is fantastic. And if you don't watch the show, it is absolutely tremendous. And Jodie Comer is on another planet in terms of acting the best. she is on another yeah. planet really? but so, also Sandra so Oh as well the Sandra Oh and Jodie Comer oh, Sandra together oh, yeah. are just unbelievable it's like and then the writing is really really good so that's Phoebe Waller-Bridge mm. you know, has, has a huge, and he's huge hand in it and the thing is it's the kind of program that you don't really see coming and you don't expect that much of if you just sort of look at a synopsis but when you see it you think this is like on another level this is if only all TV was as smart and as subversive and as just exciting and well played as this you know it'll be a, it'll be a great thing it's one of those programs that's going to go down uh, in history as kind of like a milestone i'm i'm completely convinced of it and the thing is when i haven't read the book so i don't know what goes on but i do know that when season two came out I, I, there was a little bit of worry like can they you know repeat their success can they make it as compelling it was more compelling so mm. you know there's an awful lot you know, there's a high bar for season three, but I can't wait. I love the fact that we're getting it, you know, early. So, and Dave, you must yeah, watch it. Yeah, one, no, I will. I will watch it. It sounds good. Um, I think cool. one of the good things about the show has been that it's had a different show showrunner throughout the three seasons. So, oh, really? I think season one, it was obviously, it was, well, Phoebe Waller Bridge is one of the producers and she's the, one of the creators, isn't she? So, she's on it all the time, pretty much. But I think mm-hmm. by season three, I shouldn't see she had she still does some stuff but she'd obviously been approached by daniel craig to work on bond so i think that's one of the reasons why she's not as involved she's still part of it obviously but not writing it so it was her and a few others in season one uh then it, the showrunner was emerald fennel in season two and she's the lady that's directed promising young woman so when you oh, watch brilliant. the trailer okay. and you see oh, that it's okay. one of the exact producers of killing eve it's her okay. and it's a like suzanne heathcote who's the showrunner on season three um so yeah, I have to also mention the amazing Fiona Shaw. Uh, as oh well, man, from Killing she's Eve. so cool. <laughs> she's so far, so so good. And you wouldn't expect a show that's about assassins and an assassin and the FBI and everything else to be so funny as well, like the comedy and the thrills, because you get everything in one B. And I think if people haven't seen it before and want a taste of what Bond might be like in terms of its tone. Oh please! Uh, for when no time to die comes out, then it would be fantastic. And obviously, there's obviously people who have moaned about Lasana Lynch being double O, so all that kind of stuff. Forget it. Watch Eve, and your fears will be put to rest because it's so so good, and the writing is so so sharp and so witty. It's just tremendous. So go Excellent. see it. So good news. So, so that's something news. I need yeah. to add to my list to watch. Um, well, we're coming into land, but just before we go, I just wanted to um, highlight John Krasinski's second episode of Some Good News, which if you've never heard it, uh, heard of it, is his uh, YouTube show where he's basically just pulling in different good news from uh, all different places around the entire world. Uh, he starts off on this episode by showing everybody who's ripped him off uh, and basically takes the mickey out of them, but basically also says, if you want to rip me off, please do. Let's all just share good news around the whole world. But I'm not going to spoil why you need to watch it. But if you're a fan of Hamilton, you need to watch this episode. It is amazing. It's the best thing you'll watch all day. 
uh, and it will make you feel uplifted and happy and uh, pleased to be human. So thanks, John, if you're you're only watching. But you know, if somehow you end up across this video, then uh, yeah, well done putting this together. Uh, and thanks for all you do with that. So I think, lads, we are coming to an end. Is there anything else you want to say before we leave? Uh, wash your hands, stay safe, and enjoy things as much as you can. Or as my friend Anna would say, wash your hands, which uh, went down and hasn't gone viral yet. But, you know, no doubt will. So, um, yeah, if you don't already subscribe to our YouTube channel, please do. Make sure you give us a like. Uh, give us a, a comment in the box. Yeah, you can click subscribe. I've got a handy button that makes subscribe come up in, in the comments yeah, below. Uh, yeah. uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, if you like these videos, do let us know so that we can um, keep making more. Um, click the and thumb. We'll click, click the, the like th button. Like the video. Like it. Like it with your thumb. So, uh, like yeah, um, we will hopefully see you on the next version of whatever comes out, which will be <laughs> not too distant future. So, uh, take care. We'll see you next time. Au revoir.